Hello, Geometry. Welcome to 4.3. Information. The shape of something will not change. Like it doesn't enlarge or shrink. So it just like reflects, like flips over or slides around or rotates. All right, so starting with the warm up, it's a little hard to see. So um, in the diagram, we have triangles. KMJ congruent to QRP. Okay, so we have KMJ congruent to QRP. All right, name one pair of corresponding angles. Well, this is my congruent statement, so follow through. The first letter is going to be congruent to this, the first letter of both triangles. So angle K is congruent to angle Q. Okay, and then one pair of corresponding sides. Well, let's just pick MJ for like Michael Jordan is congruent to RP. And they should be, they must be in that same order. If I wrote MJ and then put PR, I would have an error. Okay, so um, the next part, I know this is a big warm up, but hang in there. And you're going to have your. Uh, Patty paper, that, that tissue paper, the tracing paper for this. So you need three sheets for this. Okay, so first of all, plot the points for the given triangle, then find the images from the transformation rules. And I know that this is just the warm up, but I want you to kind of figure out what's happening here. Okay, so I went ahead and I plotted A, B, and C. So you can pause that and do that right now. A is at negative 4, 3, B is at 1, 4, and C is at 2, 5, and then connect. Now, for part A, what you want to do is take each ordered pair, the x, that is blurry, the xy is going to change to negative xy. So point A prime will be, see how the sign for the x changes, will be 4, and then the y stays the same. That will be A prime. Uh, B would be negative 1, 4, so that's B prime. They say prime for it, it's going to be like the translation. And then C would be negative 2, negative 5. That's C prime. All right, so on their tracing paper, I want you to go ahead and plot those points. Now notice what I have done. You see this little, can you, see, you can't see it, that little cross there, that's going to be where my origin is. And again, I went ahead and plotted these points. Let's see if I plotted them correctly. All right, so A prime I should have at 4, 3, over 4, up 3. You can kind of see that. Why is, this is so bad. I was so proud that I had um, better lighting. Okay, and then uh, B prime, negative 1, 4, and then C prime, negative 2, negative 5. So here's my part A, okay? And that does look like it is a reflection. Do you see on how the y-axis is kind of like right in the middle and each point reflects over. So that's what this is. This is a reflection over the y-axis. So I want you to realize when you see this rule, xy goes to negative xy, that reflects over the y-axis. Think about that, okay? If I have a, a point right here that reflects over the y-axis will be right here, just the x value changed. Okay, now part B, um, we're going to keep the same x value, but we're going to change the sign of the y value. So this will be negative 4, negative 3. The B prime will be 1, negative 4. And then we have 2, 5. Okay, so I have my origin right there. I'm going to go over 2, 5 for C. Um, A is, or B prime is 1, negative 4, and negative 4, negative 3. Okay, so here's the second one. Now this one's kind of harder to tell what's happening, but uh, if you pay attention you might be able to figure it out. Look at this. Does it look like it's flipping over the x-axis? Maybe turn it sideways. Can you see that better? Flipping over the x-axis. There we go. Okay, so that means whenever you see, I keep missing my values here, whenever you see 
just the sign of the y changing, that's a reflection over the x-axis. Okay, and this one is a simple translation. Okay, it's a slide. So it's either going to go up or down or who, never, who knows, or, or left or right. So this means I'm going to take each x value and subtract 2 and take each y value and add 1. So my a prime is going to be negative 6, 4. Remember, I'm subtracting 2 from the x and adding 1 to the y. And then this will be negative 1, 5. And this will be 0, negative 4. Yeah, I went ahead and I did these ahead of time, so I know it's kind of like cheating. So if you look, what's happening? This graph looks like it is going to the left two spaces, one, two, up one. Look at the B, one, two, up one. Look at the C, one, oop, one, two, up one. All right, so what's happening is it's going left two, up one. All right, next page. More fun stuff ahead. All right, these are called rigid transformations. The reason why they're called rigid transformations is because the shape doesn't change. This is kind of hard to see here, so I'm going to try to trace it a little bit. Okay, this is a rotation. And a rotation, you just basically you are spinning it around. Could be the origin, it could be another point, who knows. Um, the second one is a reflection, meaning it's like, it flips over left or right. It can flip over a y-axis, an x-axis, or an equation, a line. And a translation is just a slide up and over, down and over. Doesn't matter which. This one looks like it's going up so many, over so many. So what you do is you match a point. How do you get to this point? You have to go up so many, over so many. That tells you the slide. Okay. So translations, reflections, and rotations are examples of rigid motion. So I'm going to underline that. You know, just when I thought I had, that's not working either. Hmm, I don't know what's going on. It's like the lighting changes in this office every day. All right, so just when I had the glare thing solved, I guess. So let's look at example ones. Do your best. Try to listen to what I say and hopefully it works out. Describe the transformations that you can use to go from A, B, C to A prime, B prime, C prime. Okay, so this one, look at point A. It looks like it's um, translating up, then to the right. So up, then right. Now specifically, I guess, we're at negative a half. It looks like it's going to go up one whole, you know, because it's at a positive half. So up one, and then to the right, how many? One, two, three, four. So up one, right four. What would that rule be, OK? So x, y would go to, the x is going to the right one, so x plus, sorry, the, the right is going to the right four, so x plus four, and the y is going up one, so y plus one. So that would be the rule for that, okay? Uh, how about this one? Okay, this one looks like it's reflecting and then it's a translation. So how do you know? Um, I always like to use the, the tissue paper. But again, we're still kind of guessing here. I, now, when you're going to be doing reflections, uh, let's see. I'm marking, there we go. I'm marking the um, origin. And then I'm going to draw the triangle itself. I'm going to mark just A. So if I have a reflection, I'm going to reflect it over the um, x-axis. It'll look exactly like this. But now it's not completely. Um, on that graph. So maybe if I slid it over a little bit. Oh, look at that. Did you see that? Slid it over one, then it worked perfectly. So this basically we reflected, and then we went to the right one. Okay, now this could be a really big challenge problem. What would that rule be? So um, if you think about it, you go back to the rules when we reflected over the x-axis, the y value changed sign. Remember that? x, y went to 
x negative y, and this went, this is a reflection over the x-axis. Okay, so, but then we're going to go to the right one. So that means it's going to be x plus 1, and then we have the negative y. All right, you can always check to see if that works, but pretty cool, huh? All right, this next one, craziness, craziness. Um, let me keep that with it. Did I mess up my examples here? No, we're on example two. Um, example two. Okay, identify the congruent figures in the coordinate plane. So first of all, um, I went ahead and I marked off just these three figures. Okay, so three, six, and five. Now, let's see which ones are congruent. If you look, three is congruent to one, and it's congruent to seven, okay. And let's look at six. Is that the same as, maybe if I turn it this way, eight? Yeah. So six is congruent to eight. And then four and five look like they're the same. So there's five. And I'm going to flip it this way. And there's four. Oh, this was supposed to be an eight. But now it says identify, oh, it, it just said identify the figures that are congruent. Explain. They basically they're just the same size. But um, I actually went in and explained like how you went from one to another. So to go from three to seven, we'd have to go down and over. And go from three to one, we can go down and over. Okay, so these can be translations. They can also be reflections. If you'll notice, um, let's see, is this way? I can flip this sheet around from three and then slide it down two over one to get the one. So there's lots of different things you can do. So this one you can have like a reflection, a translation, Ooh, spell trans wrong. Uh, also, probably a rotation would work with a translation. And that would be actually for all of these, okay? And so I think, I thought number, um, going from five to four, how would you go from five to four? It would be a really big challenge. Um, so basically I thought, well, maybe we can rotate it uh, like this. Okay, so uh, rotate it clockwise, 90 degrees, and then reflect over the axis and you'll get the picture. So start playing around with the tissue paper and stuff. And it makes life fun. All right, last page. Okay, so here we go. Describe the translation uh, figures from A, uh, from figures A to B. Okay, well, this was supposed to be A. I'm not sure why I don't have it marked. This is B, and this colored one is C. Okay, so how can you go from A to B? Well, from A to B, it looks like you can go left and down or down the left. So usually you do the x-axis stuff first, left, then down. So that would be a translation. And then how about from A to C? Well, look at this. A, the horse is facing in that direction, and C is force, uh, facing that one. So you're obviously going to have a reflection. But if you reflect this over, it's and then we have to actually slide it uh, down. So we're going to reflect this and then a translation down. Alright, so not very difficult. And what is going on with this picture? Okay, if you look at this one right here, first of all I ask, is there any reflectional symmetry? Can I um, flip this over? It looks like you could, but notice how like this box would match onto that one and this one's not colored in, that one is colored in. Um, or if this was on black paper, the white would be colored in. It's your choice. But this is definitely rotational symmetry. 90 degrees. Because if you turn this paper 90 degrees, you have the exact same figure, pretty much. Okay. Um, but as far as vertical or horizontal sym uh, sym symmetry, I don't think so. And this one I just said color for fun. Yeah. Out of my boredom, I went ahead and did that. So I know you're going to be all over that, Alex. Okay, um, 
have a nice one and this is going to be our assignment. I lost the remote to unrecord. Here we go. Bye.